Hey guys, it's Advent season, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, and, you know, for a long time, uh, this season, the whole Christmas season, was just really, really stressful for me for a lot of reasons. Um, and I had a really hard time just even finding the joy in it because I was so stressed out. And one of the things that God led me to do um, in order to try to get back to what was important about this season and you know that was joyful about this season was I um, started reading an Advent devotional every year and there's one that I've read like many times over the years I mean it's my absolute favorite it's called Good News of Great Joy uh, it's written by John Piper um, and it's just really powerful just some really powerful reminders of who Jesus is and what Christmas is really about and why it's important and why we can find joy and peace in it, even when, you know, things are kind of crazy. And I wanted to share something from that with you today. It's, it's actually, you know, I'm going to kind of paraphrase, but it's straight out of one of the readings from this, from this Advent devotional. And the scripture that goes with it is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Um, and of course, you know, I mean, the, the governor calls for, um, or the, the emperor calls for a census of the whole Roman Empire. Um, and so uh, Mary and Joseph, you know, she's uh, incredibly pregnant. They have to travel to Bethlehem from Nazareth. And there's something amazing in this story that I think, I think that we miss so many times. And the first time I read this, this was one of the most powerful realizations to me uh, when I read this devotional for the first time. Um, that God ordained beforehand, I mean, think about this, you know this, but God ordained beforehand that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, right? It's in prophecy throughout in the Old Testament. Um, God ordained that when the time came, the Messiah's mother and his legal father were living in Nazareth. Right? Again, prophecy. And God put it in the heart of Caesar Augustus to take a census of the whole Roman Empire. God put it in the heart of Caesar Augustus to take a census of the whole, whole Roman Empire. And when you feel insignificant, which I know sometimes we do, listen, that's something that I struggle with a great deal. I feel insignificant. I never feel good enough. Um, and, and we can feel that way a lot. And we can feel that way a lot this time of year. You know, if we, if we think about, you know, the way the world is, I mean, there's seven, eight billion people in this world almost. Um, and, and all the news, like all the things that we hear about are these big political things, big economic things, you know, people of, of you know, outstanding people with power and prestige. And, um, and that's not you and me, right? It's not. And so we can feel insignificant, but there is astounding encouragement in this idea. Just that very idea that God put it on the heart of Caesar Augustus to take a census. Think about that. The astounding encouragement here is this, and I'm gonna, this is straight from the devotional. All the mammoth political forces and all the giant industrial complexes, without their even knowing it, are being guided by God, not for their own sake, but for the sake of God's little people, the little Mary and the little Joseph who have to be gotten from Nazareth to Bethlehem. God is at work in those big forces for our sake. There's an incredible quote here, and I, I love this so much, man. Uh, John Piper says, God wields an empire to bless his children. God wields an empire to bless his children. We're the little people. We're the little people and, and all of these, you know, great political powers and, and the prestigious people, I mean, they seem big to us. But God uses them for our sake. And we see that in the story of the birth of Christ, that God uses 
the powers of the world to get Mary and Joseph, these little nobodies, to the place where they need to be to do his will. Proverbs 21.1 says, The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. And there's one final quote from this I want to share with you. He is a big God for little people, and we have great cause to rejoice because he's using the big things of this world to make us into the image of Jesus. He's using the big things to make us into the image of Jesus. So I, th I hope you can find joy in that this Christmas season, in that idea that God is wielding an empire for our sake, to bless his children. Let's pray. God, I do thank you for all that you do to bless your children, to make us like Jesus, to strengthen us, to provide for us. And Lord, that you can change the heart of anyone, that you can use anything, that you are more powerful than all the powerful forces of this world. And I thank you, God, that though we are insignificant in the world's economy and yours, we are not. We are, we are your children that you are working in and through every day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.